Hi, welcome to another FST beta version 9 video. This is going to be a quick bit video on the first week of FST beta version 9. It's been a little bit more than a week now that I've been using it more or less daily in different scenarios. And I want to give you my thoughts on a couple of observations and experiences I've made and also answer or try to answer the question, is it better than version 8? which parts are better and I'll try to show that using a couple of examples from different drives and situations. For me the biggest issue I'm having or seeing right now is when it comes to crossing or merging into intersections especially where there is not like a 90 degrees t-crossing um, angle but intersections where the angle is you know something like 120 degrees just like in this example that we're looking at right now. So I'm approaching the stoplight here. You can see traffic coming in at maybe 35, 40 miles an hour from the left from about maybe eight o'clock position. My car is stopping and it's displaying the message that it's waiting for cross traffic. And I'm not actioning that because I didn't see the message. And after this car, my car decides to go. And you can see the acceleration was actually quite quick. And it didn't feel like it was creeping more, but really, you know, you can, it's hard to describe on video, but you can feel it when you're in the car, when it's creeping versus the acceleration when it wants to go. And this one felt, at least to me, like it was the one where it wanted to go. Now, this is an interesting point, and I think this is where the car's mind display that um, Elon Musk has been talking about will become much more important in the future, in the sense that there has to be a way of the car to communicate how the next step is going to look like, what the car's intention is to do next. And the reason why I'm saying this is because as the system evolves, gets updates, it will be capable more and more of dealing with edge cases where it's becoming more and more important that I, as a driver, as long as I'm still responsible for its actions, can kind of get a feeling of what the car is going to do next. And in my view, that's really important to get trust and to remain uh, trusty into the car's action and capabilities. Now, as to how that's going to be done, I, to be honest, I don't have an idea. I'm not sure if display screen only will help in this case, or if there has to be some kind of audio um, feedback as well. Think of the lane change confirmation in Navigate on Autopilot, where the car is able to give you haptic and, and uh, audio feedback before it initiates a lane change. It's just that in these city street scenarios where FSD beta is operating in, it's, there's much less time to communicate that kind of intention and decisions. I'm definitely very curious to see where Tesla is going with this one in the next updates. Now here's a second example of a similar situation where the car is actually reacting perfectly fine. So there was one car going by, another one's coming, the car slowly moves forward. It doesn't feel like acceleration at all, just slowly moving and then let the car pass and uh, we do our turn. This was a very similar scenario like the one I've showed you before. And here it handled it perfectly fine. And in other instances, it handles it fine as well. So hopefully we will see some improvements in the next iterations of the beta version nine software. The next thing I want to highlight is a clear improvement between version eight and version nine. This is a left turn at an intersection version 8.2 and previous versions were never able to, to do that without me intervening. And it's even a confusing one for human drivers. If you look at the black car in front of me here, uh, you'll see it's using the left turn lane and then basically this left turn lane kind of you know merges into a left lane two lane and it's confusing for a lot of human drivers as well so while technically not correct um, I think it's more or less the only way a car can take this intersection here and version 9 handled this so that's a clear improvement over previous versions uh, using this one example here next up is something I've mentioned in my previous quick bit video or first one which is the much more the much smoother handling of certain situations smoother braking no braking at all where previous versions would have panicked and slammed on the brakes i think this is something maybe you guys who have the vision only cars can have a look as well because i'm expecting this to work similarly and regardless of of, uh, of the beta version or not but see this example here the car is crossing my car doesn't slow down at all it seems to know quote unquote that the other car is not going to pose a problem as it's continuing its turn in front of us there is another 
um, situation. I'm going to show that next. Again, a similar setup. I'm approaching an intersection. You will see a car coming from the right. Talking about human drivers, this guy just cut in front of me and then basically illegally turned left here um, and uh, made the ramp to the highway. So again, here the car didn't slow down considerably. In previous versions, it would have slammed on the brakes for sure. Now, after my last video, I read an interesting comment. Basically, it's a user was saying, well, maybe the car just doesn't care or is, 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 is like more aggressive in these type of, of scenarios. And um, I have a, a situation coming up next that I want to show you where actually you can see that it's not the case. So let's have a look at this. Watch that black car coming up now from the right. It's turning into my lane. And then I guess didn't see the biker or realize too late. And it basically decides to just stop in the middle of the road. So this felt very natural. My car reacted in a very natural way. It was slowing down, not like panic braking, that feeling that was they are sometimes in similar situations in earlier versions, but smooth, I mean, as smooth as it is possible in scenarios like these, but it really felt natural. So also here, these type of things, version nine handles much more natural than previous versions. Talking about natural behavior, it's kind of hard to translate that um, in videos, but here is an example of a right and left left turn quickly one after the other, a right turn coming up here. The car cannot really see to the right until it starts turning. And you, you see here it's very smooth. There is no hesitation at all. And again, in the car itself, it feels much more natural. It's kind of hard to describe. Also, this left turn here, Again, a little hesitation, but in previous versions, it would have hesitated much more. The steering wheel would have moved much more. And um, this, these are two examples, I guess, of turns that just feel much more natural and more confident than in earlier versions. So that's de definitely an improvement. Next up is something I also wanted to show. It's just a transition from the uh, beta to highway driving. And also here, I feel this has improved quite a bit. So watch um, this on-ramp here. And um, we are picking up speed here. There is quite some traffic on the highway. And now look at the speed. So I'm going 35 here, turning on the blinker. The car slows down, realizes it can't go, speeds up again in front of that minivan or bus and smoothly makes that gap. It's almost like it wanted to show off to that Model Y in front what it can do. But it's no, in, in all seriousness, this is really a really natural, very human uh, move that it made there. And um, it definitely something that the previous version I haven't experienced before. So also here, not a radical improvement, but just much more smoother, much more silky kind of um, maneuvers that the car is doing. Last but not least, one little bit here that maybe is not directly related to the beta version 9, but something that I found interesting that Andre Karpath in one of the talks he did recently, and I put a link to that talk in the video below in the description. If you're interested in machine learning and vision, AI, things like that, I definitely recommend watch that, that video. It has a lot of interesting pieces about Tesla's decision to remove radar and things like that in it. But Karpathy, in a specific um, section of that talk, was talking about the neural nets detecting um, objects, even if they are occluded by something. And there was an example of some dust or whatever that um, the, the neural nets were able to kind of keep track of objects, even though the cameras couldn't see it for a little, a little while. And Karpathy mentioned this in the context of auto labeling. So at the training side of things, not so much when the neural nets are working in the car. And I was curious to see uh, how does that look like? And you can see here, that's one example of a car is blocking our view in front of us. And you can clearly see that the visualization at least kind of loses track of the cars turning in front of the car in front of me and only pick it up again once it's back in, in, in the visible area of the camera. So it doesn't look like this um, part that Carpathia has been talking about is already there in the cars itself. They seem to only be using that for training at the moment, but I totally expect that to become available in the cars in a future version as well. And I think it's important, not just for training, but you know, when the car has to make decisions to take into consideration, again, 
things like where does that car move most likely, if, even if the camera cannot see it for a couple of frames. So where does this leave us overall after one week of version 9? I think the car is doing maneuvers much more natural, much more human um, in most scenarios. The biggest issue for me, as mentioned in the beginning, is this uncertainty when it comes to um, cross traffic, especially cross traffic with higher speed. So for that, I see two things. One is that the software needs to be able to detect this better or react better to these. And second, probably much more important looking into the future, is this communication with the driver to kind of improve that mind's car view to communicate to the driver what the car is going to do next or not going to do next. So I think this is going to be very important. And again, curious to see where Tesla's going with that. So to me, version 9 is a very solid improvement over the previous versions, and I'm looking forward to future updates. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.